indie distribution is something I want to touch on because I don't know how much the guys after me are going to talk about it. Um, I, I talk about part of, part of being successful or part of just having your name heard is, is making yourself visible. Like I said, if I locked myself in a room, I wouldn't be up here talking to you. I wouldn't know Danny, I wouldn't know David, and I wouldn't be doing what I enjoy doing. I wouldn't be getting paid for it. Um, so I'd say definitely tell everybody that you write music. And if you do end up writing music for a game, um, you can publish it yourself half the time, depending on the contract. And, and that's, that's a good idea, because there are people that enjoy the music that you're writing that aren't necessarily gamers. And that's where Pandora comes into play for me. You can submit your music to Pandora. There's no fee for that other than sending them the CD, I guess, and having a UPC code and also making sure it's on Amazon and all this other junk. But it's possible. It's not that hard when you look into it. And honestly, if you guys need help, you can get a hold of me and I can give you a nice cheat sheet for that kind of thing. Um, I have CDs up here that were produced by Kunaki that I have distributed on CD Baby. It's a very easy, cheap way for something that, you know, you're not maybe having a, mil like a million dollar budget or you're not gonna sell a thousand CDs. You get them made on demand, so you only have the CDs that you need and you only pay for the CDs that you know you're gonna sell. Um, what, what kind of like cut do they take out of that? They, Kanaki or CD Baby? Well, I know CD Baby takes like, what, like six dollars a CD? It depends on the price you set. Um, CD Baby, I think I've only had about, I don't sell them for that much, I'm not. They take a four, about a four dollar cut. Yeah, I'd say it's between four I, and six, depending on what you set it at. When I was looking up the Meat Boy one, it said like six dollars, and I wanted to sell it for like ten bucks, and it's like you're gonna take. Yeah. But that's, I mean. That's if you sell the physical CD. CD Baby also is responsible for digital dis yeah. distribution, like getting on iTunes and getting on Amazon MP3. But and the, the thing, like, I noticed you don't have Bandcamp on there. Oh, I can't believe I don't have Bandcamp on here. Um, Bandcamp.com is probably the. It, it's where all my stuff is, it's where all Danny's stuff is, it's where all of David's stuff is now. He's welcome to Bandcamp. Um, I think you guys will be familiar with it if you saw it. There's a lot of artists that use it, big names. Um, stuff Jen Stevens uses it. Daniel Baranowski uses it. <laughs> um, um, that, but yeah, like, uh, we, um, right now we're selling them through Bandcamp. Um, and they only, after you make $5,000 with them, they only take 10%. So like, I'm selling them uh, for like, Ten bucks or whatever, you know, uh, the whole press they came out to like a dollar something to do. So like, we have to ship them ourselves, and I'm getting like my family and people to help me out. But um, so it's a lot more work, but it's a lot more money just directing. Yeah, I do a similar thing. I run a the fundraiser. I have CDs up here for Songs for the Cure, and I think there are a lot of people in this room, as far as musicians go, that are on that CD. Um, I'll talk about that at the very end, but we have to ship them out too, and that can be kind of a headache, so that's why I'm, I'm okay sometimes with the $6 cut of CD Baby, considering I did a soundtrack for free and I want to get it out there, it's not like that much off my back. Um, so um, I actually didn't get a chance to do this as I was going along because I didn't know if it would work, but I was going to play some samples for you guys, and it, this just was going to kind of cover the beginning to the end of um, my progression, so I wanted you guys to have an understanding of where I started, and kind of where I ended up. Um, so I'm only I'm not gonna play too much of any one of these. But the first soundtrack that I think I did that felt like I felt like got any recognition at all was a game called Bonesaw. Is any I, mean, I don't know. It'd be really rare if anybody played Bonesaw. Anybody? Okay, good. Um, this is something I tracked, like I said, and um, it's sort of half chip tune, half retro. And this is I didn't get paid for this. this and I think that they're probably going to talk about this in their panel too, hopefully, is the when you should do something for free and when you shouldn't. Um, this is something I did for free, and this was one of those times when I do not regret that decision. Doing that got my name out there, and now I have a really good relationship with uh, Kyle Pulver, who did Depict One and is doing Snapshot, which is an amazing game um, that he asked me to do music for. Unfortunately, I was too busy with other stuff, so unfortunately, saying that you're too busy for anything is usually a bad thing to say. You did not give me the cord. I'm unprepared. I'm going to be G-rated up here. Are we supposed to be? No. I think I already violated that a few times. <laughs> Josh. Oh. My pants were going to come off. But I feel like they're not. <laughs> my pants were supposed to come off? No, mine. Oh, well, that's later. There's, a, there's so many more opportunities to do that. I'm just, I'm not, I don't know if this is going to work. He did not instruct me very well on how to run this thing. Push the start button. Okay. Push the start button. All right. Uh, I might just play on tape. Play on tape. Does anybody? Is there a tech guy in here? Anyway, left me. Real to real. They left me. Real to real. I have a phone. I was thinking about it. Plugged 
Sorry guys, bear with us one second. this bone saw thing I was talking about. So, like, I'm going to talk over it a little bit because I think I kind of want to describe what I was doing when I did this. Um, tracking involves, not be too loud, tracking involves using samples that are all at a, at a bass pitch and that when the music plays it, it, it modulates it up or down according to the pitch you're telling it to play. So the, the, comp the good thing there is that you get a very good ratio of what space you use to get an output like this. This game's soundtrack was only about 10 megabytes and it's got mostly synthesizers, but it's also got some orchestral elements as I was talking about, so be quiet for a minute. So this kind of gives you an idea of just like where I started. There's obvious influences of like Mega Man and Kirby in there and I don't know, that was kind of what the game was all about. Um, I went on to write the music for the Spirit Engine 2, which I've talked about a little bit, being a, one of my more successful my first commercial games. Um, definitely independent. It's not something that I think most people have heard of. Has anybody heard of the Spirit <coughs> Engine 2? Why are you guys on my panel? <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to just roll down. Okay, uh, so then I wrote the music for, for Ubisoft in the, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Has anybody heard of that? Thank you, okay. <laughs> um, I actually just wrote this for a little Flash game to promote their bigger Wii game that was released um, about a year and a half ago. Uh, so I'll play some of that, and this gives you the idea of what commercial, like, commercial game developers are looking for. Um, and like I said, uh, I'm coming from a level where like, I just, you have to be confident. If you're not sure what you're doing at first, just keep doing it, and hopefully you get lucky. And sometimes you, you hit the nail on the head the first time, which I did this time, but in the case of the next example, it's not always true. that I had to do shortly after that was through the same people, it was for the MTV VMAs. How many people in here watched the VMAs? Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. So, yeah, so here's a clear example where you're often asked to do work for something that you don't often feel comfortable for, but you, you definitely, in this case, if MTV were to come up to you, say, hey, we need such and such, you're gonna say yes, no matter what. Like, I don't watch TV, I don't watch MTV, rather, and I don't really care for the VMAs. I don't care, like, cash is good. I'll brush my teeth with many, many bottles of Jack, but I will not, I just, you, you get the idea. So I had to write music for a, um, for the VMAs website in particular, and it was a portal you had to go through to actually vote, and you had to play one of three games to submit your vote for, like, the artist of the year or something, and, um, one of them was this DDR ripoff called the Moon Man Dance Off, and it was this complete, just, it wasn't programmed very well. The idea is too soon. It was actually before, so. Um, um, so there were three levels, and there were like three levels of difficulty, and so I wrote for that, and I was not confident going in. And this is one of those things where I had to do more than a couple iterations before I got it right, but eventually I felt like everything worked out, and we're all very happy, and you know, I got paid. I think everybody's happy. I like it. So, here's this. So obviously there's elements of this that are very video gaming, as they should be. It's very DDR-ish, Dance Dance Revolution. Um, but there's also my own elements in it. There's 
some orchestral things hiding in there, very deep. But, you know, that's just who I am. Um, so last year, and this was probably one of my bigger projects last year, is I decided, I, I have a, very, a long heritage with the indie community, and that's sort of how I kind of I grew up, like, the indie baby is kind of what I feel like, and I still feel like I'm a little bit of a baby. Um, but I decided to do a game for free after I'd kind of established myself, and this game was called Gun Girl 2. Um, it was a freeware game that actually blew up in Germany. I get fan letters in languages I cannot read, which sucks. Um, but and I, at least they're fan letters, exactly. So That's why you just reply with, yeah. Ja, baby. Ja. Um, Smiley. No, a deaf German deaf. smiley, it's a new umlaut. <laughs> you have to teach me that later. Um, so this was actually, I wanted to be a little more ambitious, and the reason I did this project for free is because I had just gotten into the conservatory of music, and I had access now to all of these live musicians. I knew I was meeting violinists, I was meeting brass players, and I mean, I hadn't had a lot of experience scoring, like notating out by hand and sheet music and stuff, uh, but it was definitely something that with my classical background I was familiar with. Um, so I decided I would pursue trying to put these classical elements and these live performers in a very like rock orchestra setting, and that was kind of what I went for, and I, th I mean, I think it definitely worked. Um, so this track actually combines, a, a friend of mine is a phenomenal guitarist, and he's a lot of inspiration behind the soundtrack here, and then I also have my friend who's a violinist, and we went in the studio, and it was a home studio, I don't mean to say like we went in the studio, but, you know, we, and we hammered this out, and about three months, and I disturbed all my roommates, and then nobody wanted to talk to me in the house for a while, but, um, other than that, I felt like it was successful and it was a good investment of my time and energy. And I'd love to listen to a little bit. for a little bit. Um. <laughs> 